Mimi uh, naitwa Sungoyo and uh, I'm the national spokesperson of Kongamano la Mapinduzi. Ile ambayo nitaifanya kwa leo is to read our statement as an organization. It's a statement which went out today yesterday evening and which we are sharing with uh, our friends from the media. Uh, today in particular because it is Labor Day. Uh, our press statement is on the state of the nation. Kongamano la Mapinduzi wishes to express its position with regard to the prevailing political and economic situation in the country and by extension the state of the nation which as many of you are aware is beyond dire. Since the beginning of the year, Kenyans have been confronted by a high cost of living, road accidents that have led to loss of countless lives, a crumbling healthcare system, and a strike by healthcare professionals, forced evictions in Nairobi, in Mukuru, forced evictions in Naivasha, and forced evictions in other areas. We have also been confronted by the fake fertilizer scandal, which stinks to the high heavens a high rate of youth unemployment, a water privatization bill that is currently before parliament, and most recently, uh, as you are all aware, most recently we are in the midst of a crisis occasioned by heavy rainfall and the resultant floods which have claimed countless lives across the country. The Kenyan government, meanwhile, is hell-bent on dodging the real concerns of Kenyans, and the measures it has taken to address these concerns can only be termed as a band-aid over the gaping wound of capitalist-centered governance decisions. We at Kongamano La Mapinduzi take this earliest opportunity to state that no government should subject its people to what the Kenya Kwanzaa administration has subjected Kenyans to. Today being Workers' Day, commonly known as Labor Day, Kongamano La Mapinduzi takes ex exception to the mistreatment of workers in this country. Our labor force is unemployed, our labor force is underpaid, our labor force is overworked, and our labor force is generally exploited by big capital. We especially take note that the strike by medical practitioners is still on more than six weeks after our doctors downed their tools to demand, to demand the payment of salary arrears and the hiring of interns. The government claims to have no money to pay medical interns, while is it at the, at the same time starting discussions on the purchase of a new presidential jet. It claims to have no money to pay interns, while it is at the same time renovating state house in Nairobi and in other parts of the country. It claims it has no money to pay interns, while it is at the same time giving political failures a lifeline as cabinet administrative secretaries. It claims to have no money to pay interns, while it is at the same time purchasing fuel guzzlers for the occupiers of state house. And all this is being done at exorbitant costs that are being borne by the already overburdened Kenyans. We demand, we at Kongamano La Mapinduzi wish to make it clear that we are demanding that this government must act quickly to safeguard our right to health care as enshrined under Article 43 of the Constitution. This government must fully implement the collective bargaining agreement that it signed with our doctors in 2017. <coughs> Comrades, the ongoing floods have made it clear to all those who pretend not to see that major urban areas like Nairobi do not have a functional drainage system. The current drainage system in Nairobi was planned in 1948 when Nairobi was barely a village. These floods have additionally made it clear that we must center proper urban planning in our development initiatives, that we cannot build uh, concrete on uh, wetlands as we have seen in uh, many parts of Nairobi. As of today, these floods have claimed more than 100 lives 
and displaced at least 120,000 people. They have destroyed homes, they have destroyed business premises, and it's a huge loss because these are all things which were built through the sheer hard work of the Kenyan people. Uh, and we have seen Nairobi bearing the brunt of this devastation. We wish to make it clear as Kongamano la Mapinduzi that those affected by the ongoing floodings are victims of a system that has abdicated its duties and responsibilities. Uh, and, 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 and at this juncture, I think it would be right for us to say that may all the affected families and may all the affected communities find comfort in these trying times. KLM therefore joins millions of Kenyans in questioning the reluctance of this government to declare floods a national disaster. Why have these floods not been declared a national disaster? Why have the ongoing floods not been declared a national disaster and appropriate action taken despite the continued loss of lives and despite the predictions of the meteorological department that we are again going to have uh, increased rainfall over the next two days. As we conclude, we just wish to note that it is additionally unacceptable that more than a thousand Kenyans have died through road traffic accidents since the beginning of 2024. More than 1,000 Kenyans have died through road traffic accidents since the beginning of 2024. The number of fatalities is a significant increase from to, compared to 2023 and is very alarming. We at Kongamano La Mapinduzi wish to make it clear that the government's lack of a clear plan of action for our roads and road users is an abdication of the social contract that should exist between the people and the state. Kenyans must demand for answers around the happenings we have highlighted above. We have held discussions here today and Kenyans are demanding for answers around the floods. Kenyans are demanding for answers and Kenyans are saying that the dignity and the sanctity of human lives must be respected, that the government must not abdicate its social responsibility, the social contract which exists between it and the people. As we, as we finish our statement, it's, it's just to send out an appeal to all Kenyans of goodwill. If you have an extra blanket, an extra mattress, if you have extra clothes, if you are able to afford a packet of unga or any food stuff, please, uh, please uh, find a way of delivering this to affected communities, like here in Madare. There is various organizations, Wigs Up, Madare Social Justice Center, Pirates Youth Group, and many other community organizations which are working with victims of the floods. And I think that all donations and all forms of assistance will be welcome. Thank you.